I just hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So, why do I feel like a failure? So, I don't even know where I'm going with this video. I assume there's gonna be a regular poker session, but I don't know, I just thought I'd be honest with you guys and tell you how I've been feeling. So about a year ago, my wife quit her job as an engineer and she was making, we'll say roughly 100K and I was making 40K on the side playing poker, but mostly I was a stay at home dad. So basically we had like one and a half incomes and then we decided to switch and I would do poker and content creation full-time, and hopefully the balance of the both would comprise enough income for our family to survive. And it was a risky decision, and it was a tough decision, but it was exciting, I don't know. It just, life's expensive, and it's really hard sometimes. Now we're just living off of my income, which comes roughly about half from playing and about half from content creation. I'm making roughly the same amount that my wife was making as an engineer, but we don't have that second income that I was providing on the side. And I think it's really tough because I haven't been able to build my bankroll at all this year. Uh, Pretty much whatever I make goes to our family, goes to all their bills. And we live a good life, you know? We go on vacations and we eat out and spend time with family. And I think it's just tough. Because sometimes it feels like, like it's not enough. Like it's good, but it's not enough. I don't know. I just thought I'd share with you guys. Uh, so my hopes, you know, my hopes are for this channel to grow and on the sponsorship ad side, make enough money to provide for my family. And then on the poker side, I mean, you know, I'd love to make more money playing poker, but there's no guarantees in that. So for providing a stable life for my family, hopefully that side will grow. And uh, I don't know. I just thought I'd share my feelings with you guys. So. Time to uh, get on with my day and play some poker. <laughs> so I'm going to be setting a goal and we're gonna try to do it. We're gonna try to hit $10,000 a month of earnings. That's through YouTube, that's through playing, that's through sponsorships. I'm gonna let you guys know how much I make along the way to see if we can hit that goal. I don't know if we can. And with that, let's go play. Let's jump into my very first hand. I pick up five, three off in a bomb pot and the flop comes five, five, 10, two diamonds. Let's go right away flopping trips. It's gonna be a good day. Action checks to me and I bet $75, charging diamond draws, charging a 10, but then the button raises to $160. I don't love the raise, though it could be like a cutesy raise putting me to the test, but then a player from middle position makes the call and this raises all sorts of red flags. On a paired board in a bomb pot, I bet someone raises and this guy wants to call? That looks incredibly strong to me. He either has a five with a great kicker, possibly even a full house right now. It's only 85 more. I have trips, but I think I have to fold. I fold, they eventually get it all in and the middle position player wins with pocket tens for a flopped full house. After that, a seat at a better table opens up, so I take it. Couple orbits go by of nothing. And then finally, we pick up ace queen of hearts on the button. The hijack opens to $30. He's a very loose, aggressive player. We're actually gonna be battling a lot with him today. So let's give him a name. Let's call him Jean Bob. Uh, anyway, seems like a pretty clear three bet. I bump it up to $90 and only Jean Bob makes the call. Flop comes 10, three king, two diamonds. He checks, I go for a C bet of $80 and he makes the call. Turn is a three. He could have a number of draws right now, but he could also definitely have king queen, king jack. So when he checks, I check back. 
Hopefully I just hit a jack or an ace on the river and bam, ace on the river. Looks pretty decent until he bets $225. Now he could have missed diamonds, which I beat. He could have diamonds with an ace, which we would chop against. But the hands I'm really worried about are jack queen for a straight or ace 10 for two pair. It's a tough one, but eventually I decide to call. And he has ace 10. <laughs> Moving on, moving on, moving on to six, three of spades on the button in a bomb pot. The flop comes three, four, six, mm, two pair. Uh, anyway, uh, the middle position just goes all in for $110. Jean Bob calls from the hijack and not this time, Jean Bob. We got two pair in the bomb pot. I'm raising it up. I make it $310. Jean Bob folds were heads up against the middle position player. The board runs out seven, eight. He has two six. I hold and we take it down. Next up, I have ace queen of spades in the low jack. I open to $35. The cutoff calls, the button calls, the small blind calls, and then it's on to Jean Bob in the big blind. Hello. Of course, in good old Jean Bob fashion, he raises to $230. Now, with all these flat callers, Jean Bob should be very incentivized to squeeze. And now I have a decision. Do I want to call? Do I want to fold? Do I want to raise? Against a very aggressive opponent like Jean Bob, I think I'm gonna go with the third option and raise. I go for the four bet to $520. Folds back to Jean Bob, he thinks for a while, and then does the one thing I was dreading. All in. He has me covered, so this is for $1,230 total. I already put in 520. I don't feel good, but I call. We run it twice. First board comes six, eight, deuce, six, deuce, nothing. Second board, three, ten, nine, seven, ten, nothing. He shows ace king. So we chop the first board, he takes the second, and I lose $615. So I'm down roughly $800. It's not good. It's not the best. I pick up five seven of hearts in the low jack. I decide to get frisky and open this one up. I make it $35, get three callers, and the flop comes jack four six two hearts. Just the dream flop. We got a straight draw. We got a flesh draw. Action checks to me. I decide to check. I've got the check raise plans in mind, but the cutoff checks as well, and the turn comes the queen of diamonds. Action checks to me again, and all right, I'll start betting now. I bet $105. I'm fine with folds, I'm fine with calls, the straddle calls, and we're heads up to a river which comes the eight of hearts. Very nice, we hit the flush. Now a bit unusual, but the straddle leads out for $300. When an out of position player leads out for a big sizing, he's saying he hit this river big. So I'm thinking either a flush, a straight, or maybe a bluff. So now the question is, do I call or do I raise? I think if I had a slightly bigger flush, like a 10 high flush or a queen high flush, I would raise. But given the fact I'm losing to almost every flush, I just call and he does have a flush, but he has a flush I can beat. He has two three of hearts. Crazy, one of the only flushes I can beat. I'm happy to take it down. Of course, I wish I raised given the fact he had a lower flush, but it is what it is. Next hand, ace queen suited again, this time under the gun. I open to $35, the cutoff calls, and then the straddle three bets to $130. Last time I was in this situation, remember I four bet, but this time I'm just gonna call, see a flop, the cutoff calls two, and we're three ways to a flop, which comes queen, four, six, two diamonds. The straddle goes for a pretty hefty c-bet of $240, and I debate between raising or calling, but I decide to just call, keep in his bluffs. The cutoff folds, and we're heads up to a turn, which comes a 10. Now the straddle slows down and checks, which I don't think he'd be doing with kings or aces, so I'm pretty sure I have the best hand. He could have ace-king, ace-jack for a gut shot. He could have diamonds. I need to charge all those hands if they want to continue. I bet $375. He thinks about it, but then lets it go, and I take it down. 
All right, nine, 10 of diamonds in the hijack. Jean Bob is back. He limps from under the gun and I raise it up to $45. The small blind and Jean Bob make the call and we're three ways to a flop of Jack, nine, deuce, two diamonds. I have a pair, I have a flush draw, small blind checks, but Jean Bob decides to lead out for $65. I think he oftentimes has a Jack here, but I can beat a jack with a nine, a 10, a diamond, and also might be able to bluff him off a jack later on. I raise to $200, starting the story that I have a strong hand. I don't expect John Bob to fold yet, and he doesn't. He makes the call, and the turn is the three of spades, bringing a second flush draw to the board. John Bob checks it over to me, and now, even though I have showdown value with my nine, I'm gonna turn it into a bluff and bet big, $400. This should put any jack in a very, very tough spot. I'm showing a lot of strength here, and if he does call, I do have outs on the river. Luckily for me, he eventually folds. I take down another big pot and finally pass the profit line for the day. Unluckily for me, the last two hours are completely uneventful and I bleed chips to bomb pots and missed flops. And then I call it a night. Feels so good winning $23 in like six hours, making $4 an hour. <laughs> ah! What a start, what a start. It's better than a loss. All right, see ya.